What's up guys? Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. And if you're in the city this October, in this video I'm going to give you the five best things that you can do with your time in Barcelona this October 2020. October in Barcelona is still one of the better months to visit the city, despite the fact that we're getting out of summer and the temperatures are starting to drop a little bit. You don't always need a coat. There are a lot less people in the city and usually there are tons of activities going on. Obviously this year there's even less people and some of the activities unfortunately have been canceled. Oktoberfest won't be going on this year and the market of markets that's in front of the cathedral has also been canceled. But there are still a lot of activities planned, still a lot of different things going on. So if you are here this October, don't worry. We're going to get into it right now. The five things that you can do this October 2020. If you're here at the beginning of the month, from the 3rd to the 7th, we've got the festivals of Rusé. These are going to be taking place on La Rambla, the most famous street in Barcelona. Now this is normally a street that I would try to avoid or not go on too much, but with the pandemic and a lot less people in the city, it's actually quite nice to get onto the street. The pandemic has really affected a lot of the traditional neighborhood festivals that we would have throughout the summer, causing them to be closed or to be held in less capacity. The Rambla, which has basically become its own neighborhood, wanted to keep theirs going. And this year is going to be the 58th celebrations for the festivals of Merced. This year what we're going to see are a lot of floral decorations and even 15 free activities that you can do if you're here from the 3rd to the 7th. The Rambla is really known for its floral shops that line the street. And this year, in combination with the Florist Guild, we're going to have flowers all over. To kick things off on October 3rd, if you head over to the Vice Queen's Palace, what you're going to find is Un Flor, Un Desich which is one flower, one wish. And anybody that heads over there, there's gonna be about 4,000 roses available that you can put in and make a wish. This is going to be dedicated to the healthcare workers this year. This is the eighth year that this has happened and it should be a pretty cool thing to check out. Apart from checking out the decorations or just walking up and down the street in general, remember that there are 15 different activities that are going on that you'll wanna take advantage of. Because of the different safety measures, you might need to make a previous reservation, so remember that all of the links are down in the description box below. The one thing that I think everybody will want to check out is the Palau Guel. This is one of the first houses that Gaudi made in the city and it's just off of the Rambla. Some people say it's even the best. The 4th of October is the first Sunday of the month, so the Palau Guel is free. But they've opened it up the 2nd and the 3rd for free admission as well. Remember, it's a limited amount of tickets, so if you want to get in, make sure that you get online or call and you can have those reservations. But if you don't manage to get it during those three days, remember that the Palau Guel is only five euros to get in right now anyway, so it's definitely worth your time while you're here. The other thing that I would check out is getting a boat ride on the Galondrinas. This is just at the end of La Rambla, and this will take you through the port and up and down the coast. Both the third and the fourth tickets are free, and this is something you should definitely check out to get some beautiful views of Barcelona. On the 6th of October, the Tablao Cordobés, one of Barcelona's oldest flamenco bars, is celebrating its 50th year anniversary with some guided tours on the inside. Barcelona and Catalonia aren't too well known inside of that flamenco world, but there's surprisingly a lot of history, so it should be something pretty cool to check out. The Erotic Museum is offering free entrance on the 7th, and it's having a concert on the 3rd. I've never seen a concert inside of an Erotic Museum, but that should be pretty interesting. Barcelona's Maritime Museum and the Aquarium are both offering free tickets throughout the week but the aquarium tickets have already been sold out. So if you're interested in doing any of these things, I'd get online, check out those links below, and make sure that you can get tickets to whatever you wanna see during the week. If you're here from the 8th to the 18th, the Sitges Film Festival is holding its 53rd edition. Sitges is a town just 40 minutes south of Barcelona by train and very easy to get to. The festival itself specializes more in horror films, which is a nice little warm up with Halloween just around the corner. I'm really looking forward to a movie called The Vampire of Barcelona, which is about Enriqueta Martí, a woman charged with kidnapping and killing all these children in Barcelona, still today the most notorious serial killer in all of Spain. But that's a subject for another video. If you can't make it down to Sieges, there are online options where you can still check out those films and enjoy the festival. I would recommend a day trip down to Sieges anytime. Apart from the beaches that it has, there's also a Bacardi factory and a huge amount of modernist history down there to check out. A beautiful city, uh, and I need to get a video up on a day trip to Sieges for you guys. October 12th is known as El Dia de la Hispanidad, or Spanish National Day. Something that is celebrated all over Spain, but here in Barcelona and Catalonia, it's a little bit different. Back at home, it would be celebrated as Columbus Day, which has basically been turned into why Columbus was not such a great dude. In the rest of Spain, there is a lot more attention paid to this day, and it is a national holiday, so most things are closed. What's interesting is that having the National Day of Catalonia 
the Diada just last month on September 11th. And with the growing number of independence movements and just the support in general, what you see here in Barcelona is more of a response to that, that idea of Spanish unity. So you might see some manifestations, some demonstrations, but they're not really too big. If you're visiting, the thing that you're really gonna notice is that because it is a national holiday, that a lot of things are gonna be closed. So opening times for museums or wherever you wanna go might be affected, so keep that in mind. Now this next one is actually really cool, and this is Open House here in Barcelona, which is gonna be taking place on the 24th and 25th of October. Open House is something that happens every year and it gives you an opportunity to go into different buildings or different places that you normally wouldn't be able to. When you come to Barcelona, you see the Sagrada Familia, you see the Casa Batio, you see all of those houses created by Gaudí, but what you're missing out on are maybe some of the lesser known buildings. Open House gets you that opportunity to open up different places that usually aren't even open to the public. You can sign up for general admission or for any of my guide friends that are watching, you can volunteer as a guide yourself. Check out that website and you can find out all the information just over there. As a guide, and this is something that I did just a couple of years ago, you get to lead smaller groups through these buildings and really show them something that maybe they've never seen before. What I did were smaller tours in the Palau Macaya, which is an incredible modernist house that is closed off. It's actually opened by a bank now, so not many people can get in, but on these days, what you'll see is a lot of people going over. This year, the theme is all about a healthy city, and it's looking at not individualistic houses and buildings, but more of these communal places. It's also looking at more of mobility and accessibility and sustainability within the city and neighborhood, and finally, looking at things for a Mediterranean style of architecture. So it should be really cool. What you can do is check out that link below. As we get closer to the date, more and more information will start coming out and you can see maybe some alternate buildings to those top bucket lists that we always try to see when we're visiting Barcelona. Last but not least, we've got Halloween, which is not as big of a deal here as we would have back in the States. Kids are dressing up more and more and you'll see decorations, but there isn't that typical trick-or-treat atmosphere and a lot of times it just ends up being people dressing up and going out to the different clubs. With the pandemic, no clubs are open, everything has to close by one o'clock, so it's gonna be a very different Halloween this year. One of the other big things that people usually do is they head down to Porta Ventura, which is a big amusement park. It actually offers a really fun Halloween activity for everybody that will be running from the 19th of October until the 15th of November. So you can check that out if you're looking for some real Halloween plans. The thing to remember about Halloween is it's not the actual holiday here. What everybody celebrates is November 1st. Todos los Santos, or All Saints Day. This is really like the entrance into fall where you have chestnuts and sweet potatoes sold on the street. And the one thing that you need to try if you're here around this time are the panayets, which is really just sugar and egg yolk covered with pine nuts, chestnuts, almonds, all sorts of really good treats that you can find in all the bakeries around here. Nobody really knows where these panayets come from, but it seems to be something about bringing offerings to the church in the past. Either way, super tasty and you gotta try it while you're here. Hopefully that list helped you as you're planning for your time here in Barcelona this October. If it did, I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button. Remember, if you need anything else, you've got the descriptions for all of those activities, all of those festivals in the description box below. But if you do have any questions, leave me a comment below and don't forget to subscribe so you'll find out what to do in Barcelona every single month.